Yeah, my name is Matias Carrasco Keen from, from the from astronomy department. My advisors for the CS uh, fellowship are Robert Brunner from astronomy and John Tyler from, from physics. And I'll briefly uh, give you an introduction to one of the uh, biggest challenges in astrophysics and cosmology today, uh, which is basically constraining the dark universe. So let me give you a little um, introduction of what is the current picture of the universe today. We got this uh, recent image from Planck collaboration, which is a satellite to measure in the cosmic uh, background. And so from, from, from then, this is one of the most precise measurements of, of the, uh, of, let's say, the, of the component, component of the universe, as, as you can see here. And this, this was taken when the universe was 300,000 300, years old. So this is a very, 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 very uh, long in distance and in time. So this is what we know of the universe today, that uh, roughly 70% of the universe is uh, composed of dark energy, and the other 30% is, is matter, and from which we have a lot of uh, contribution from dark matter, almost 26%, and only 4 or 5% of uh, normal matter, which is the matter that we see in stars and galaxies and so on. So even though Planck has measured this to very, very accurate numbers, there's still many open uh, questions about the universe for example, what is dark, dark matter, what is dark energy, what is uh, the acceleration rate of the universe, which is uh, 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 measured through the Hubble constant. And well, the universe can be described as a set of cosmological parameters. And there are several methods, met, uh, methods to answer this question or to constrain this parameter. One of them is measuring this uh, at the very early universe. But the, the method we're using uh, here is uh, by studying the statistical analysis of special distribution of galaxies. So seeing how the galaxies are clustering or how the galaxies are distributed in the sky can tell you something about the underlying dark matter. Because since we can't see dark matter, we won't see the, uh, the galaxies and the stars. Uh, this is the only observable we have. And we have only this 5% of data to infer the, the rest of the universe. So it's, that's the challenge, and we try to contribute a little. So to study the, um, the clustering of galaxies, or the distribution of galaxies, we obviously need distances. So you have the position of the galaxies in the sky, but you also need the distances in the line of sight. So if you're, we are sitting at, at, at the center of this plot, and each point here is a galaxy, so you can see clustering. So the, this cl uh, big cluster here, and voids, and well, other, other features, and the way these galaxies are distributed in the sky depends strongly in the, on the underlying dark matter uh, that's dominating this, uh, this, this high uh, mass region. So basically, this dark matter forms these gravitational potentials, and all these galaxies form these potentials. So studying how this density varies, uh, especially, then you can infer some information about this. So how do we do this? Uh, we can use either the two-point correlation function or the power spectrum of the uh, densities the galaxy distribution. So we need distances. So this is the first uh, problem we, we have to uh, address. So to measure distance to galaxies, you can use uh, this, this, the full spectra, which is just the light of the galaxy uh, going through the, a prism. So you, you have all the wavelengths, and you, help, you see all these features coming from the absorption lines or from different chemical elements on, on, on the galaxy. And basically, the position of these uh, lines or features here in white can tell you the shift with respect to the uh, rest frame uh, spectra, and then you can infer the velocity and therefore the distance to, to the galaxy, or at least uh, an idea of, of, of a distance. But taking the spectra is very, very expensive in terms of uh, time and, and, and money. And so even though you can, you can do that, uh, it's very hard to do it for millions of galaxies. So in order to do a statistical analysis, you need B millions, uh, hundred millions of, of, of data, of galaxy, high uh, statistics, and for that, the only option you have is uh, is trying to measure distances through photometry. Photometry is just taking images of the galaxies at different filters, right? So uh, as you can see here, you have filters at different uh, wavelengths. You take the images through these filters, and then you get uh, some information about the underlying or uh, spectra. So basically, the challenge is. Uh, is trying to measure the distance to a galaxy using eight or 10 points instead of the 5,000 points that you will have if you have the, the full spectra. And so for now, when, when, when I say distance, 
I also say, uh, or when I say photometric redshift or photo C, uh, I also say it's the same as, as, as distances because you measure the shift in the galaxies through photometry, not from the spectra. So as I said, we need a lot of data, and a lot of data can be done by, uh, by taking spectra. You have to do by photometry because it's very fast taking images of different filters uh, with large CCD cameras. And there's two big surveys uh, that is very important for astrophysics and very important for, for Illinois. Uh, one, of the, one of them is the Dark Energy Survey, which is actually happening uh, right now. They, they, they'll start the official survey on, on September this year, but they already have data. They expect to, to observe roughly 300 million galaxies up to Redshift 1.5, uh, which is very far, far from, from us. Uh, it's 5,000 square degrees. All the data management is going to be done here uh, at the uh, NCSA. And one of the main goals of the dark energy survey is actually to probe uh, the origin of dark energy. And obviously, photometric redshift is needed because you don't have uh, all the spectral information. You don't have uh, photometry. And also, this, this other survey, which is even, even bigger than the DS, uh, which is the Large Synaptic Survey Telescope, the LSST, which, is a still, which, is, which has a green light, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen at some point. Uh, they have the place already, and they're building the, the mirrors and the telescope. The first light is expected to be in uh, 2020, so it's uh, eight years from, from now. Uh, they'll survey half of the sky. And they expect this is a huge survey because they expect to have at least 30 terabyte uh, of data each, each night. And also the data management is going to be here. So these are very important uh, um, surveys for, 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 for Illinois because Illinois is actively in, involved in this. And we are trying to address the distances for, 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 this, uh, for this data. So, let me, so basically this is a, the main uh, slide of my talk. This is the, our, our, our work. We have developed uh, an end-to-end -end cosmology understanding. So basically, we compute the distances to galaxies, then we study the clustering of the galaxies, and then we fit cosmological parameters. So from, from the galaxy images, we apply some statistical analysis to get the distances. We developed recently uh, TPC, which stands for Trees for Photo Cs, which is a parallel photo C algorithm that, that uses uh, prediction trees and random forest and also extra information to predict uh, this uh, photometric redshift. We released the code and we published uh, the paper along with it. But also, we uh, continue developing this because, because this is our machine learning algorithm. So it, it's uh, always limited by the training sample you have. Since you, you have some spectra, uh, you can use that as a training data, as a training set for, for your algorithm. But you're always limited by that. So we also are currently developing a, a second technique to uh, try to go beyond the training, the training set uh, under a Bayesian framework. I already have some, some work done on this. Uh, we're using a random naive bias classifier prior for, 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 this, uh, for this combined technique. And we also try to extend this to a self-organized map, um, which is a, a supervised, sorry, I, I didn't mention, but prediction trees and random forest is a supervised technique. Uh, while uh, SOM are unsupervised techniques. So we try to combine all this to leverage somehow the uh, weakness and, 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 and the strength of, of each technique to get a much powerful predictor. So once we have the distances to galaxies, we can study the clustering. Uh, for that, we apply a Cahoon and Lev transformation, which is basically a PCA uh, transformation or a dimensionality uh, reduction to the over densities or to densities of the, of the galaxies. And from then, we compute the angular power spectrum, which is basically the composition of the densities in the spherical harmonics. So basically, the power spectrum is telling you how strong is the clustering, which is related to how, how much dark matter is, uh, is behind it. And once we compute the angular power spectrum, we can fit a, a theoretical model using a Monte Carlo or a Markov chain Monte Carlo um, algorithm um, and get the best uh, parameters or the best estimation of the parameters. One of the advantages of using this angular power spectrum is since dark energy is basically, basically driving the universe and is, is producing the acceleration of the universe. So studying the universe at different snapshots in time can, uh, can allow you to constrain dark energy. So if you, if you apply the same model 
to different redshift shells or beams, then you can put some constraint on, on, on the dark energy because that's related to the, uh, the evolution in time, basically. So that's the point of all these uh, techniques. So I'll uh, briefly go through some of the uh, main features of, of, of our old uh, framework. This is one of the uh, three examples that we use in, in our uh, algorithm. So you see you start from the center and you start to split, split uh, different dimensions. So in each lead, basically you have data and then you can make a prediction from this data. You make hundreds of these trees in a forest way uh, and you combine all these results together to get a, a strong prediction. After that, you can com even combine this with, a, uh, as I said before, with a random naive bias classifier prior in, or, or, or self-organized map that works as a, as a prior, so you can combine them under a Bayesian framework to get an even, even stronger uh, prediction. As an example, uh, DS data, they, they, have server, they have some observations, but still uh, are in the calibration phase. So we have some simulated data uh, in this case, we have roughly 40 million galaxies that we wanted to predict the distances, and we know the real distances, but we kept them aligned. So we see here how uh, TPC, our code, works in, in prediction these uh, distances. So you see here in this axis, the vertical axis, the prediction, and in the horizontal, you see the, the true distance. So you see that it's a very well correlated, it's unbiased, so you, see, you don't see any, any tilt. And, and it does a, a very good job. So one of the idea of, the, of developing TPC was to uh, be an accurate estimator and also able to deal with a lot of data. So we're talking here about 40 million galaxies. And we're not only producing the distances, we're computing the PDF of the distances, of TPF of the redshift. So basically we have a probability distribution for each galaxy. So we're talking about roughly 20 billion uh, data points because for each galaxy we have roughly 500 points in the distribution. So uh, one important measurement that uh, is, is needed in, in cosmology is the galaxy distribution. So basically it's how the galaxies are distributed. Basically it's a, it's a histogram uh, as a function of distance in the light of size. So relative zero means uh, today, and relative 1.4 means very far in time and, and, and space. So on gray here, you see the, the true distribution. And on, 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 red, on red here, you see what, uh, what happened when you stack your prediction PDF, your prediction probability, you stack them together uh, to, to, to make one of these plots. So basically, you are producing these 20 billion points to this curve here. And you see they match very well, which is very important. If you use the mean or the mode of the PDF, just one estimator instead of this 500 that I mentioned, you, you see this uh, fluctuation due to either shot noise or just uh, biases. So this uh, galaxy distribution is very important in cosmology because it, you can think uh, in terms of like, it's, it's basically the mass within this, uh, this stretch of the range. So since each point is a galaxy and you can associate the galaxy to a mass, even though they're not the same. These are measurement of the mass uh, of the universe, so you can apply this for different cosmological studies. So at the end, uh, the point I am trying to make here is that this galaxy distribution is very well reproduced when you stack this PDF. So you have to keep all this information, which is uh, a problem when, 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 when you go to hundreds of millions of galaxies, because you have to store all this data. So after you calculate these distances, you can calculate the angular power spectrum. I won't uh, discuss this in detail, but uh, basically the shape of this angular power spectrum, which is the, the composition of the over-density clustering in uh, spherical harmonics, depends on cosmology. So depending on the shape, you can see uh, how dark matter or dark energy or different other cosmological parameters affect uh, these uh, measurements. And if you calculate this angular power spectrum at different redshift beams, like if you split this in five or six uh, beams, and you could be the same, you can put constraints dark energy because you can see the evolution of this clustering. And to finish um, our, our framework, so we computed the distances, we computed the clustering analysis or, or how the galaxies are clustering in the sky, and then we're using a Markov chain Monte Carlo, we can fit parameters. We have to use a Markov chain because we normally fit 
five or six parameters. And this is one example of a, a preliminary result. Uh, for example, you can fit the, this omega here are basically the densities from the pi plot uh, I showed at the beginning. So you have dark matter and baryonic matter. You can fit the baryonic matter just by itself. The bias, which is basically, um, yeah, it's because it's funny, but basically it's, it's, it's the difference between the clustering in galaxies and the clustering of the dark matter that is uh, behind. Uh, some other parameters, like the Hubble parameter and, and the power spectrum. So, so that's uh, what I wanted to, to say. Uh, as a conclusion, conclusion, we have that photoseas are becoming very, very important for extragalactic study because all the current surveys are just photometrics. They have some training, but they're all uh, photometric. We developed TPC and some other uh, techniques to predict uh, distances to, to this data. We plan to extend this using a self-organized map. Um, we have a code that activates and make a robust calculation of the angular power spectrum using this uh, KL compression. Uh, and we, we use this Markov chain Monte Carlo for parameter estimation. And yeah, we, we plan to extend this to other statistical measurement. Thanks.